dear students today we are going to discuss the first unit of the the semester 2 engineering physics that is the circular motion we are already familiar with different kinds of motions and we are studied the linear motion in the last semester and we can also see some other type of motions in the nature. And one of them that is circular motion. What is the circular motion? Circular motion is a movement of an object along the circumference of a circle or rotation along a circular path. It can be uniform with a constant angular rate of rotation and a constant speed or non-uniform with a changing rate of rotation. Let us see some of the examples of the circular motion. An artificial satellite orbiting the earth at a constant height. Another one is a sailing fan's blades rotating around a hub. And we are all, usually we are doing this activity, which is an example of the circular motion. That is, a stone which is tied to a rope and is being swung in circles. Another example is, a car turning through a curve in a race track. You can also see an electron moving perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field is also circular motion. And we can also see some other examples in our daily life. So circular motions as already stated, it can be uniform or not uniform. So what is the uniform circular motion? It is the motion of a particle along the circumference of a circle with a constant speed. It is called a uniform circular motion. It is called a uniform circular motion. But we should remember that Whenever a particle is executing a circular motion, its direction is continuously changing. Its direction is continuously changing. So its velocity is continuously changing. Even though it moves with a constant speed, its direction is continuously changing. So, his velocity is continuously changing. Okay. Let us come to the... A particle is executing a, a circular motion. A particle is executing a circular motion along the circumference of a circle. Okay. Uh, since it is a circle, circular motion, uh, it has a, a center. Let me denote the center as... Oh. And suppose when we observe the particle, let us say that the particle is at the point P. The particle is at the point P. Okay. After a time T seconds, the particle reaches the point Q. The particle reaches the point Q. So it moves with a velocity. Linear velocity with the velocity v. Okay. As the particle, you can see from the figure, as the particle moves from p to q, there is a radius vector that is op. It uh, describes or it undergo a angular 
displacement. So it describes an angle. So when the particle moves from P to Q, the radius vector it describes an angle theta. Suppose theta is that angle. Then this theta is called angular displacement. Theta is called angular displacement. That is when the particle undergo a linear displacement. So in the circular motion, it also undergo a angular displacement. Okay. So from the figure, we can see that what is theta? Theta is equal to suppose S is the displacement. S is the displacement and R is the, the radius of the, the circular path. Then we can express theta is equal to S by R. Theta is equal to S by R. Okay. And also we can express the linear displacement S is equal to or the linear velocity v is equal to, you know, suppose this is the linear displacement, uh, linear velocity v is equal to s by t. So, s by r gives the angular displacement and s by t, that is the linear velocity. Okay. Similar to the linear velocity, we can also have a another quantity that is called angular velocity. Angular velocity. Suppose theta is the displacement in a time t, then similar to the, the definition of the linear velocity, we can define the angular velocity as the, the rate at which the angular displacement taking place. Okay. From the figure we can see the angular displacement occurs in a time t. So, the angular velocity omega. Usually we are using this uh, symbol for the angular velocity. Angular velocity omega equal to the rate of the angular displacement that is theta by t. Okay. So, what is the unit of the angular velocity? The unit is, usually we are expressing the angular displacement in radians. That is the SI unit. So, the angular velocity, the unit of the angular velocity is radian per second. Radian per second. Okay. And also, if, it, if the uh, if the particle covers one complete circular motion around the circumference of a circle, then the time for that uh, for the particle to go once around the circle is called period. It's called a period. Okay. Usually we express the period as capital T. So, period T is the, the time to go once around the circle. Okay. But we know what is, we can express period, that is the time for the, so in a period T, the particle covers one complete revolution. So, its angular displacement is angular displacement is 2 pi. This angular displacement is 2 pi. And uh, the linear displacement is 2 pi. Linear displacement is 2 pi. Okay. So, we know the velocity is equal to the displacement by time. So, the time is equal to 
velocity uh, displacement by velocity so i can also i can express t as the displacement by let me write the displacement by velocity okay so that is equal to so the displacement 2 pi r divided by the velocity v so this is the expression for the the period and the reciprocal of period the reciprocal of period is called the frequency frequency that is the the number of rotations or the number of revolutions in one second so that is given by here we are uh, you see the expression uh, uh, that is n so n is equal to 1 by t that is equal to v divided by 2 pi r okay so that is the period and a frequency now we are going to find the relation between the relation between angular velocity and a linear velocity relation between angular velocity and linear velocity okay so uh, you can refer to the our previous figure here what is angular velocity angular velocity omega is equal to theta by t what is the linear velocity linear velocity is equal to the displacement the linear displacement by time okay so from the figure you can see that from the figure you can see the relation between linear displacement and a angular displacement that is theta is equal to s by r theta is equal to s by r from that s is equal to r theta is equal to r theta therefore we are replacing the di linear displacement in the expression of velocity linear velocity so v is equal to s by t so that is instead of s we can substitute r theta r theta by t so what is theta by t hmm? since theta by t is omega therefore v is equal to r omega that is v is equal to r omega this is the expression that is related by the linear the two velocity that is linear velocity and a angular velocity v is equal to r omega V is equal to R omega. Okay. We can also have a some other expressions for the omega. That is, if V is if V is the linear velocity and omega is the angular velocity. Okay. Uh, suppose uh, if the particle have the period capital T, that means it uh, covers. It is a time for the particle to go once around the circular path when the particle complete the one circular motion that is during the time of period it covers an angular displacement 2 pi it covers an angular displacement 2 pi so we can express omega angular velocity omega is equal to angular displacement by time 
So in a period T, the particle covers the angular displacement. The particle has an angular displacement 2 pi. Okay. So omega is equal to 2 pi by pi. Okay. 2 pi by T. And also we have a expression as we are already uh, find the expression V that is 2 pi r by t 2 pi r by t V is equal to 2 pi r by t but we know But 1 by t is equal to 1 by t is equal to that is of frequency. 1 by t is equal to frequency. Therefore, omega, I can also express omega is equal to 2 pi n. So you can see the angular frequency, sorry, the angular velocity is obtained by multiplying the frequency by the, the angle 2 pi. Okay, here I miss the frequency, omega is the angular velocity. So when the frequency is multiplied by an angle 2 pi, we get angular velocity. So, omega is also called, since omega is also called angular frequency, it is also called angular frequency. Okay. Now move to the, the next quantity. Similarly, we have the, suppose if a particle have a velocity, and if that velocity is changing, if the velocity is changing, then we say that the particle is said to have a, an acceleration. Okay. Similarly, if the angular velocity is changing with respect to the time, then we say that the particle have a an angular acceleration. The particle is having an angular acceleration. Okay. So I can define the angular acceleration. What is angular acceleration? It is the rate of change of angular velocity. It is the rate of change of angular velocity okay suppose omega 1 is the initial velocity and after a time t the velocity angular velocity is changed to omega 2 then angular acceleration usually we are giving the notation alpha okay alpha okay so, alpha equal to the change in angular velocity by time, that is omega 2 minus omega 1 by t, omega 2 minus omega 1 by t. Okay. What is the unit of the angular ac angular acceleration? That is the, the unit of the angular velocity by time. So, the unit is, what is the unit? Radian per second that is the velocity and the unit of angular velocity divided by time so we have radian per second square radian per second square okay now let us find the relation between linear acceleration and angular acceleration okay uh, suppose 
uh, we have the uh, during the time t the linear velocity of change the linear velocities are changed from um, changes from v1 to v2 in a time in a time t in a time t so what is the linear acceleration you can express the linear acceleration a is equal to v2 minus v1 by t as we are already studied in the last terms okay so we can use the relation between linear velocity and angular velocity. Okay, what is that? V is equal to r omega. So uh, let me express uh, V1 is equal to V1 is equal to r omega. From that we can have omega 1 is equal to V1 by r. Similarly, what is the angular velocity second? Uh, the final angular velocity omega 2 that is related to the linear final linear velocity that is v2 by r. V2 by r. Okay. But we have the the angular acceleration that is <coughs> omega 2 minus omega 1 by t. Omega 2 minus omega 1 by t. Okay. So let me express again. Let me express alpha is again. <coughs> alpha is equal to omega 2 minus omega 1 by t. So let us substitute omega 2 and omega 1 by in terms of linear velocity. That is v2 by r minus v1 by r whole divided by t. Okay. Let me express this v2 minus v1 by r. So what, but what is v2 minus v1 by t? That is the rate of change of linear velocity. What is that? That is the linear acceleration. So, alpha equal to A into A by R. Alpha is equal to A by R. Okay. So, what is A? A is equal to A is equal to R alpha. A is equal to R alpha. R alpha. Okay, that is the relation between linear acceleration and angular acceleration. We already have the relation between linear velocity and angular velocity. What is that? That is V is equal to R omega. V is equal to R omega. You get the similarity between these two relations. Linear quantity is equal to radius into the angular quantity. That is A is equal to R into alpha, P is equal to R into omega. Okay. Now let us move to the, the equations of motion in the circular motion. We are already familiar with the equations. Okay. In the linear motion, we have the relation between the linear velocity, angular velocity, displacement, etc. Similarly, we can have the, the similar type of equations in the, the circular motion or the angular motion. Okay. We are already familiar, let us write uh, the equations in the, the linear motion. So, we are not going to derive the relation by just uh, seeing the similarity between the linear motion and the angular motion. We can express, we can write the equations in the angular motion. Okay. 
so we have the, the linear motion we have v is equal to u plus dt v square equal to u square plus 2as is equal to ut plus half at square so in the case of angular motion in the case of angular motion we can simply write the equations hmm, uh, by simply uh, just comparing the, the corresponding equations the corresponding quantities so uh, let uh, theta is the angular displacement in a time t during that time is angular velocity changes from omega 1 to omega 2 so omega 1 is the initial angular velocity omega 2 is the final angular velocity uh, since there is a change in angular velocity in a time t so there is an angular acceleration alpha okay so by comparing this uh, quantities with the linear uh, motion we can express the equations in the angular motion like v is equal to u plus t for that we have omega 2 is equal to omega 1 plus alpha t okay similarly v square for the equation v square equal to u square plus 2 as okay that is we can write omega 2 square equals omega 1 square plus 2 alpha theta 2 alpha theta similarly s equal to ut plus half a t square for that theta is equal to omega 1 t plus half alpha t square okay so these are the equations in the circular motion of the angular motion 